When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. If you grab some acetic acid, which is a alkanoic acid, combine it with an ether alcohol, which is a alkanol. If you combine those two, we mentioned in the last couple of videos, that what happens is we form an ester. So we have an ester forming. And that ester itself forms right here. And we're going to go over this apparatus in the next couple of videos, talking about how we actually make esters, specifically the design of the experiment. But you can see we have our ester here, and we call it ethyl acetate. You might wonder why we call it acetate. Because we mentioned that when it comes to alkanoic acids, if they're in the ester form, they usually actually end with an o eight, but this acetate does not. And the reason why is because acetic acid and acetate, these are not actually their sister mag names, these are their common names. So when it comes to common names, we don't use the same nomenclature for the common names. So if you see acetic acid, that's the same as ethanoic acid. If we were to have ethanoic acid, we would call it ethanoate. But we have its common name, so it's slightly different. But rest, rest assured, this is still the same ester. This here is an ester. Now I mentioned earlier, we put acetic acid and ethyl alcohol into this reaction right here. And what will happen is the ester will form. But it will generally not form unless we give it a bit of a push. Right? We need to give it a bit of energy or a bit of motivation to actually combine and form an ester. And the, the, one of the combinations, or one of the actual motivations could be heat. We could add some heat. That means these particles will move faster and it's more likely that they will combine. So heat is one way and the other way is by using an acid catalyst. So we can pour some acid catalyst into the solution and it will make it go faster as well. These are the two ways we can actually make sure that this reaction happens. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because dot point itself says describe the purpose of using acid in esterification for catalysts. Catalyst. And so in this case we have to talk about why we would use an acid catalyst in this reaction. And remember we've got this equation from the last video and I actually made one slight modification. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't have that in the last video. I realized that this here I didn't have. It's, it's, a, it's a reversible reaction. It's reversible. In the last video I think I said it's, it's I didn't, I had the arrow only to go to completion, so I had that arrow. That means it goes to completion. It is not, it does not go to completion, it's reversible, which is quite important. So we have this reversible reaction where we can go from, the, in this case, butanoic acid and ethanol, these which is two examples, they combine and they form butanoate and water. And this is the yeast itself. We mentioned earlier that we can use heat, so we might put some temperature in here for this to actually happen. So we might put some temperature in there, maybe a certain quite high, enough for the action to the reaction to happen. Or what we could do as well, in combination with the temperature, is put this acid in there. In many cases, what they often use is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Not just sulfuric acid, but concentrated sulfuric acid. So this is a really good catalyst. And there's two things it does. First of all, it simply speeds up the reaction. That's one thing it does. It speeds up reaction. Now when it comes to catalysts, if they speed up the reaction, what that actually means, it just means that it goes from here and reaches its equilibrium faster, right? So if, for example, let's say there's five molecules here in the ideal state, and they form, let's say, two esters and a two water molecules, then what the actual sulfuric acid will do as its catalyst form, it will simply make this go faster, right? So it might re go from that five to that two ratio eventually anyway, it might take let's say a day, whereas if we have that acid catalyst, this will simply make it go faster, right? so it'll be there faster, I believe it might there be there in an hour instead of a day, just an example, right? so that catalyst function will just simply make it go faster, but it's actually a, another function it does, the sulfuric acid also dehydrates, 
If you look at the equation, you can see that if it dehydrates, that's actually add something quite interesting. Dehydrates means it removes water. And if you look at that equation, where can we find water in that equation? Well, the water itself happens to be here. And since this is an actual reversible reaction, right, so this is a reversible reaction, what happens if we remove this water? Or if we remove some of the water? Well, that means that it's going to be less water here. And then since we have, we can apply Chatier's principle, if we take away some of the water, what will happen as a compensation effect to remove the stress is we're going to move in a, to right. We're going to move to right. Our whole reaction is going to move to right. We're going to produce more esters because water was removed, and these two will combine to replace that water that was removed. Right? So that's what happens in a, in a reversible reaction due to Chatier's principle. So first of all, one function was sulfuric acid was simply to speed up the reaction, to make it go faster. But another function was actually to make more ester, because now, because this water is gone, right, so we put some water out, say we put both of those out, what will happen is some of those, which usually we had that 5 to 2 ratio, what will happen now is some of these will have to make that remake that water, so let's say two of them break up, uh, sorry, join together, and then we have our two water forming again, they're happy, but now because when water forms, Easter forms as well, so now we actually have a bit more Easter than we have to begin with. So it says, describe the purpose of using acid in esterification for catalysts. It had two purposes. The first was simply to speed up the reaction, right? So that's what many catalysts do. They speed up the reaction and thereby might make it go from point A to point B faster. It won't increase the amount of product we have. This doesn't increase the amount of products we have. It just makes it go there faster. The second one was that it also helps dehydrate. And since we have water forming in the products, if our water goes down, we said that the whole reaction will shift to right, which means more water will be formed back to normal levels again. But as a result, also more Easter will form. We have more Easter than we had to begin with, or we would have more Easter than if we had no sulfuric acid. And so this is unique because the second one was just to it will actually add more Easter. It will not just make it go faster to a point where we reach equilibrium, it will also change the equilibrium. It will shift the equilibrium to the right. As we said, speeds up the reaction, this means that it will, it will go and get to the equilibrium stage faster, whereas the second one means it will actually shift the equilibrium to the right, which means more Easter's will actually also be produced. And that was the role of Easter's when it comes to Easter F. That was the role of acids when it comes to Easterification. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.